Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and module number two on a, the introduction to quantitative chemistry. In this third video, we're going to be looking at the collecting of different types of gases. So one of the important things that we are probably already aware of is that a number of the chemical reactions, even the common chemical reactions that you may have carried out in your junior years, have involved the production of one or more gases. The gases that we most typically uh, encounter are hydrogen gas, often uh, displaced from acids by a metal, uh, oxygen gas, probably one of the most famous experiments or the one that's done very often in the junior school is the elephant toothpaste one, and oxygen gas is what creates all those foamy bubbles. Uh, and also carbon dioxide, a gas that we've uh, used in uh, production uh, to uh, We've discussed in relation to things like photosynthesis and respiration, but also has been produced from the decomposition of, <coughs> excuse me, different, <coughs> excuse me, different carbonates. Uh, so these are three very important gases, and we have tests for each of these gases. So for hydrogen, we have the pop test because we know that hydrogen is explosive, combines with oxygen to form water, and when it does that, it releases a huge amount of energy. Um, and so we use the pop test for uh, hydrogen. For oxygen, we use the glowing splint. So if we uh, set a little piece of uh, wood on fire, um, make sure that a section of it is glowing and blow out the flame. If you put it into the oxygen, it will relight that uh, flame, that oxygen, obviously one of the important uh, components of uh, burning or combustion reactions. Uh, and carbon dioxide will be the lime water test. So um, lime water is a solution of calcium hydroxide. And when carbon dioxide is bubbled through the solution, we produce a precipitate of calcium carbonate, which is a precipitate, it's a solid, and it makes the lime water turn a little bit milky. There's a few things going on in there, but that's good enough for now. So these are the tests to identify these important gases, but um, most of the time when we've been producing them, we've sort of allowed them to just escape. Uh, occasionally we might try and contain them within a test tube or something in order to test them. Um, but how do we actually collect more uh, or larger volumes of each of these gases? Well, the method for doing that depends very much on the nature of the gas. Um, two very important properties are its solubility in water, and secondly, its density, uh, particularly its density in air. Carbon dioxide is an easier gas often to collect um, because it's more dense than air and it falls. And you will know that if you've seen dry ice and you see the gas that's coming in a kind of pours off uh, the solid and falls down. Uh, and this is because it has a higher density than the majority of the particles of air. And so it's, it falls. And so that's not too bad if you want to try and collect it. But for gases that are less dense, they're going to rise up into the atmosphere and they make them uh, more difficult for us to collect. So one of the ways of collecting gases to, is to use the um, process of downward displacement of water. So <clears throat> we do this in the method that you can see shown uh, on this particular slide. We put our reaction mix mixture into some sort of flask which we can seal um, and uh, which we can then also feed into another <coughs> container. So in this case, the bubbles of gas that are being generated in the reaction mixture are actually passing through into uh, the trough, uh, often this pneumatic trough that we just use for this type of purpose, with a little beehive shelf. So the beehive shelf actually has a way of allowing us to put a hose uh, inside it and to allow bubbles of gas to escape through a small hole at the top, uh, which are then going to uh, bubble towards the surface. So if you put something like a gas jar filled with water into um, the trough and then sit it just so it's sitting above uh, or resting on top of the beehive shelf, then the gases that come out, some of them may dissolve in the water, but the rest of them hopefully will rise to the surface and actually displace this water. 
Now the water in the gas jar is going to come down as the gas starts to fill the gas jar. So obviously what you want to make sure that you do is um, not overfill your trough. Otherwise, as these extra, uh, this extra volume of water comes in, it's going to um, start running out of, over the top. This is a very good method for collecting a large volume of gas and allowing us to um, do certain things with it, such as test it to identify it, or also to measure things like volume. And hopefully you'll have an opportunity in class uh, to do just that. Thanks for watching.